Hi, gang. In this video, I'm going to go over how to draw a raglan shirt flat in Adobe Illustrator, and I promise to keep it really simple and easy to follow. And I'd really appreciate that if you want to support my channel, please give this video a like. All right, let's get to it. When drawing a flat, I always start by placing a template. It's really, really important. So we're going to go up to File, Place, and navigate to the template, which I've got right here. Once you select your template, it's really important to go down here and uncheck Link and check Template. This way, it's going to paste it as a template and remove the link so when you open the file again later or share the file with someone else, the template will be embedded. And there it is. Now that we have the template, we want to go ahead and add a guideline. But you'll notice this time my template didn't place centered, and it happens from time to time. So let's fix it. I'm going to open the Layers panel, and I'm actually going to detach it so it's easier to see and minimize the rest of this stuff to give us a little more space. I'm going to unlock this, and I'm going to select it go up to align and align it center, center on my page, and then make sure to go back and lock it again so that it won't move while we're working. The next thing to do is add a guide. And I'm gonna do that by zooming in really, really close, turning on my rulers, which is Control R or Command R to show your rulers. And once you have them turned on, you can click on the ruler on the side to grab a guideline and drag it right out onto the page and make sure that it's centered between these two lines on the guide. And if you'd like a copy of the template, I've got it in the description below and feel free to go ahead and grab one. Now I'm gonna right click on the page and make sure that my guides are locked because a guide that is not locked is not useful. And now we can start drawing the flat. I'm gonna zoom back out and we're gonna get started. Now, to draw a flat, you're gonna start with the pen tool, and you can find that up here in the toolbar, but I'm gonna use the shortcut keys from this point forward, which is P for pen tool. I start at high point shoulder. The second click is low shoulder, under the arm, and the hem. Now, you'll notice that you cannot see what I have drawn because when I placed the guideline, it changed my default colors to none. So I had currently have no stroke and no fill. That's really easy to remedy. I'm just going to hit D for default on my keyboard, and it's going to restore my white fill and my black stroke. Now I need to switch to the Convert Anchor Point tool, which is in here with the pen tools. And it's this one right here. Oops. Looks like this. I'm going to grab that, click inside the armhole, and just drag it in a little bit to create a nice curve for the armhole. I'm going to switch back to the black arrow, which is the V key on the keyboard, and reselect this to make sure that the entire piece is selected and not just that little bit of the armhole. And now I can reflect it. I'm going to click O to reflect. I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key and click on my guide. Select Vertical and Copy to get the other half of my shirt. And now I can go back to the black arrow, which is the V key. Select both sides, right click, join to connect the top, and right click, join again to connect the bottom hemline. And now I have the basic bodice of my shirt. We're going to shape this a little bit better. So I'm going to go to the Convert Anchor Point tool. I'm going to click on my neckline right in the center and drag it down to however low I want my neckline to be. And I'm going to do the same on the hemline, but I'm going to curve it a lot because I want to make this a baseball shirt. So let's give it that kind of shape. All right, that takes care of the bodice. Now we're going to add the sleeves. For the sleeves, we're going to start with the white arrow. Shortcut key is the letter A. And I'm going to release my current selection by clicking anywhere on the page and select just this little line segment in the armhole. Going to copy it. Control or Command C for copy, and then Control or Command F for paste in front. And that's going to place it directly on top of where I copied it from. And now I can complete the sleeve with the pen tool. So I'm going to click P for pen tool. I'm going to click on this anchor point at the shoulder, 
And you'll notice that below the pen tool is a little forward slash, and that is telling me that I'm actually connecting to this line segment so that I'll ultimately be able to draw a closed path. So I'm gonna click there. I'm gonna go down the sleeve and make a three quarter sleeve length. I'll click across the sleeve, making sure that the angle is parallel to the angle down here. And as you can see, mine isn't. So I can use the arrow key to nudge it down a little bit just to get it in line. Let's move that, there we go, much better. And then I will click back up to the under uh, part of the armhole to close the anchor point. And let's just make sure that this is connecting. And you'll notice that there's a little circle showing there and that's telling me I'm gonna close my path. So there is my sleeve. Now that I have one sleeve, I'm gonna reflect it to the other side. So we'll go back to the black arrow, select the sleeve, click on O to reflect, Alt or Option click on the guide. Notice I'm clicking above the bodice and not inside the bodice. The reason for that is if I click inside the bodice, I am not gonna get that little guide popping up to know that I'm clicking exactly on the center of my guide. But if I do it above the bodice, I can see the word guide and I'm guaranteed to be clicking directly on it. So I Alt or Option click on that guide, select vertical and copy, and there are my sleeves. Now, in order to create the raglan sleeves, the first thing we need to do is unite all of this together using Pathfinder. And you can find Pathfinder if you go up to Window and scroll down to Pathfinder, and you'll notice these are in alphabetical order. I'm gonna click Pathfinder and open it up. And there's a whole bunch of these, and we're only gonna worry about one of them right now, which is this upper left corner called Unite. And if you're not familiar with Pathfinder, I've got a really good tutorial on the basics of Pathfinder on the Creative Pro blog right now, which is a great resource website. And I will put the link in the description. I'm going to grab my black arrow, select the entire shirt, so both sleeves along with the bodice, and click on Pathfinder Unite. And that unites the entire shape together so it's one solid piece. And this is gonna allow me to change the sleeve position in order to create the raglan. So I'm gonna grab my pen tool and we are gonna draw the new line for the sleeve. Now a raglan shirt starts up here and the armhole kind of comes on a diagonal this way. If you saw the thumbnail, you'll know what it's supposed to look like. So I'm gonna start by clicking outside of the neckline. And then I'm gonna click where I want the raglan to start, right on the neckline. I'm gonna click right here in the armhole, right on that anchor point, and then I'm gonna extend it outside of the shirt. And the reason for the extension pieces is just to make sure that my lines intersect. This way I can see it, it's clearly visual or visible, and my divide is going to work better. Now I'm gonna curve this to the correct shape. So I'll grab the Convert Anchor Point tool and I'm gonna click and drag a little bit to create a nice curved shape for my sleeve, which is what a raglan sleeve would look like. But it's currently got a white fill and I wanna remove that. So I'm gonna go over here to my fill and click None. It's really important when you divide that there is no fill on the stroke. Now, before I divide this, I'm gonna select this and reflect it to the other side so that my shirt is symmetrical. So with the black arrow, I'll reselect this, O to reflect, Alt or Option click on the guide, remember do it above the shirt, and vertical copy. And now I have this dividing line on both sides of my shirt, which is gonna allow me to grab the black arrow, select the whole thing again, go back to Pathfinder, but this time we're gonna use Pathfinder Divide, which is the first one on the bottom. And when I use Divide, I click on Divide once, and then right click anywhere on the page and ungroup. Because when you divide, it also groups it, and it's gonna be easier for us to continue working if it's not grouped. So this is basically it. This is a simplified raglan shirt. Um, I'll do another one in a later video with more details, including a rib neckline and some stitching. But for now, I wanted to go over the process of how to get this shape. 
There is one more thing we can do, and that's fix these little pointy corners. Right now, it looks like it was sitting on a hanger in the closet for a very long time and has gotten misshapen, and we don't want that. So I'm going to grab my white arrow. I'm going to select this upper corner, hold my shift key, and select this corner. And now I get these two little corner rounders. If I click and drag on them, I can soften the corners of my shirt and give it a much better look. And that takes care of the front. If you want, because of the way we divided this, you can go ahead and select the two sleeves and fill them with a contrast color. And that's why we actually divided it instead of just drawing a line. Now let's do the back of the shirt. With the black arrow, I'm going to select everything. I'm going to copy it, Control or Command C, and then I'm going to paste it in back, Control or Command B for back. While it's still selected, I'm going to unite it all together. So we're going to go Pathfinder, Unite one more time. And it's not going to look like anything happened because we did it in the back. But if I take this front one, I'm going to release this and move it out of the way. Whoops. This one's in pieces, so I need to select all three pieces. I'm holding the shift key to do that and move them out of the way. You can see I have this one united piece in the back. All right, I'm going to undo to make sure the front goes back in exactly the correct place. And I'm going to undo one more time just to make sure that what I have selected is my back view and not the front view. And let me just double check that that's the case. Um, control Z and it is not I undid one too many so I am currently now back to the place where I had um, excuse me where I have the front but no back right we'll even click there so I divided I ungrouped but where I backed up a little bit too far so I'm gonna undo control Z to get this right back where it belongs and let's do it again I've got everything selected I'm going to copy it, Control or Command C. I'm going to paste in back, Control or Command B for back. And then I'm going to do Pathfinder Unite, which is this one on top. And while I have it united, I'm going to right click and isolate selected path. And this is going to allow me to work on the back without seeing the front. I can go back to the anchor point tool and grab the center point right here and raise the back neckline. But before I do it, I'm going to need to delete these two anchor points because they will affect the shape. Watch what happens if I move this without deleting those points. It only bends from this section. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to grab the pen tool with the minus sign to delete anchor points. And I'm going to go ahead and delete these two anchor points, which changes the shape of my neckline. But that's fine because that's my intent. So I can grab the anchor point tool again and lower the neckline just a little bit to where I want the back neckline to sit. The last thing I need to do to this is turn it gray because when we see the back side of fabric on a flat, it should be gray. So I'm going to double click on my fill color here and let's get this to open up on the screen. And the gray that I like to use is CCC CCC. It's just a really nice tone of gray that works nicely. And there's my gray. I can switch to the black arrow and then double click anywhere on the page to exit isolation mode. And there now you see is my raglan shirt with the back and the sleeves, and that takes care of the front view of the shirt. Now to do the back view, we're gonna select everything and group it together. I always like to do that before I work on the back. And I'm gonna hold down my Alt or Option key, select the shirt and drag it out of the way so that while we work on the back, we can use the version of it that's on the template. In case we need to refer to center line, it's always a really handy thing to work on the template. Now we can delete the parts we don't need. So we don't need this front section. Uh, actually, I can't do this yet because it's grouped. What I need to do is go into isolation mode so I can work on it without ungrouping it. Now that doesn't seem like a big deal since there aren't that many layers going on here, but when you work on complicated flats, it's a lot better to use isolation mode than to ungroup. 
So to go into isolation mode, I just have to double click on this. And you can see it took me into isolation mode. I know this because the other stuff on my page is grayed out. There's a big gray bar across the top of my page. And over here in my layers panel, it says isolation mode. And now I can delete the pieces that I do not need. So that means the front section, and I'll just hit delete on my keyboard, and the sleeves, delete, delete. And now we're gonna do the same thing to create the back. We couldn't just use the front because the neckline is higher and the back sleeves on a raglan tend to be a little bit wider placed and maybe not as curved as the ones on the front. So we wanna draw new lines. The first thing I'll do is select this and hit D for default on my keyboard to bring it back to a white fill with a black stroke. And now I can draw my lines. I'm gonna grab my pen tool again. The shortcut is P. And just like before, we're gonna start outside, click on the neckline, oops, control Z. Click on the neckline, I don't know why it's jumping. There we go. Click on the underarm and click outside so that we get this shape. We're gonna go back to the anchor point tool and give it a little curve, although maybe not as much as we did on the front. We're gonna get rid of the fill. And then with the black arrow, we can select this and reflect it to the other side. So auto reflect, alt or option click on the guide, main it on vertical, copy. And now with the black arrow, we can select everything. And again, Pathfinder divide, the one on the lower left corner, right click and ungroup. And now once again, we can select the sleeves and give them a fill. To exit isolation mode, we just double click on a blank area. And now we've exited isolation mode. We don't need Pathfinder anymore, so I'm going to close it. When I finish a flat, I like to move the front above and in front of the back, which will automatically be that way because the order in which we drew it. I will select both pieces and group them together by right click group. And there you have it a raglan shirt. Let me turn off the template. So pretty simple. You just need to know a little bit about Pathfinder. And like I said, I will leave the link to that Pathfinder video down in the descriptions. I hope you found this useful. I hope you learned something new and I am open to requests. So if you have any, please go ahead and put them in the description box and I will do my best to accommodate. Have a great day.